Hey guys, SM326 here, and I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to properly set up your thrusters with beams and device plates, including a short tutorial on how to properly set up your controls with your FCU and MFC. So let's just go ahead and get started here. I've got two thruster setups. One of them works, one of them doesn't. So when you're building, always be sure to use the durability tool just to check your ship because it, it literally just tells you everything you need to know. And while it doesn't tell you how to fix it, it shows you the locations where you have problems. So if we go ahead and we're gonna look at the one that works, you can see one crucial thing that is very important, ship warp class. If you see this, then you know that your ship is valid and will work. Now, it won't always work, but it, it's pretty much telling you you've got a ship that is set up properly. Uh, as you can see, we only have a few warnings for low valid warp mass, uh, and that's the only thing. So now, if we come over to the one that doesn't work, you can see the warp class goes away and is replaced with no ship frame. Now, the issue here is obviously we can see that the device plate is beamed to the thruster, but it still doesn't work and that you know that doesn't make sense well if we click on the little cube it says at least two bolts needed to connect this part to a beam so the number one rule when placing device plates they always have to be directly connected to a beam so the way to fix an issue like this if you've got this kind of a setup you just come into the side plop a few bolts and then those will go through the beam into the device plate and bam they are, they are now the exact same. So that's just kind of a, a small quick tutorial on how to properly set up your device plate with the thruster and the beams. Uh, you can also have another issue where you have not bolted your uh, thruster body correctly and it will say something along the lines of um, thruster needs to be attached to a plate or something like that. It really just means you gotta use a beam to bolt in like I have right here, 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 and here. So that's essentially it for just the simple how to connect them structurally to your ship. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to a custom ship that I've built so I can talk you through how to set up your controls with your FCU, MFC, and thrusters. All right, so here we are in my custom ship blueprint. Uh, this is the Hauler Mark II. It's what I personally use to go out and mine because it's just simple cost a little under a mil so it's not too expensive uh, but let's go ahead and get right into it we're gonna start with the FCU and MFC so we're just gonna take a look at all these data fields you will notice you've got at the top yours is probably gonna say FCU MFC IO then you've got FCU input range general multiplier forward backward pitch yaw and roll and um, those will all have the FCU tag in front of them like this, you know, FCU backward, so that'll be FCU forward, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then if we come down to the MFC, you'll see we've got a ton of these thruster power levels, which I will explain later, uh, but those are very important. And then you will also see at the top, uh, FCU, MFC, IO one and two. So the first step to getting your FCU and MFC connected is to change this first data field in both the FC, MFC and FCU to a custom but similar name, or exact name, sorry, not similar, exact. So here I've chosen to do FCU connect in all caps, and now that they are the exact same, you can see they display the same number, which is uh, 2147, you know, all that. And so those are the exact same. If you see that they're the exact same, then you know that it's properly connected, but if they display different numbers or zero, then they are not connected. So back in your FCU, now that you've got it connected properly with FCU Connect or whatever custom name you want to use, uh, you can leave these two data fields alone, FCU Input Range and General Multiplier. You don't really need to change those unless you're fine tuning your ship. Uh, I've never needed to do that because the base values are pretty good. So if you'll look at these five fields for the basic, because I'm using the basic FCU, you have 
FCU forward, FCU backward, and then pitch on roll, all of that. But what I've done is I've renamed them. So FCU forward is now throttle, then FCU pitch, yaw, and roll are now pitch, yaw, and roll, respectively, and those are custom data fields. They don't have to be custom. You can leave them the same, but I just find that it's a lot easier when you change them to become custom data field names. So now that you've changed those or kept them the same, you want to come over to your controls, and for however many of those fields that you want to change, so I've got four that I've changed, you want levers or buttons, whatever type you want to use. I prefer levers because they're very simple to use, but if you want to use buttons, go right ahead. So first, we've got our normal lever for our throttle. This will change the throttle data field, as you can see right here, and that will go into the, into the FCU and change that value. And then, of course, we've got the same thing with the yaw, the roll, and the pitch. So what's going to happen here is, once you have those connected in with your cables into your YOLAL network, if I change throttle to, let's say, 100, then in the FCU, throttle will change to 100. So now that you've got your controls hopefully properly connected to your FCU, now let's go into the MFC, and I will show you how to properly connect that to your thrusters. So as I said before, you've got a ton of these thruster power levels. What I recommend doing is counting up the number of thrusters, including box, triangle, and maneuvers, and then creating T1 through whatever number you have. So for instance, on my ship, I have 14 thrusters, including all of my maneuver thrusters and my two box thrusters. So that adds up to equal 14, and as you can see, I've named it T1, T2, you know, all of that. So now if we just hop over to our thruster, if you click on the body, you can see I've got the top data field as T1. This is important because that is essentially how the MFC is able to talk to the thruster to change the power level, which is essentially changing the amount of thrust coming out of it. This bottom field is for an output so if you want to return the thrust on one of these screens, like I've got propellant and fuel, you can do so. But I don't need to do that, so I've kept it just the default. But this top field, you have to change it to whatever power level you want it to correspond with in the MFC. So I've got T1 for that one, and then T1 right here. On this thruster, I've also got it T1 because I don't want to have differential thrust. If you want differential thrust, then you can name this one T2. Uh, you don't have to use T, you can name it whatever you want. I've seen a lot of the dev ships use like BU for backup, BD for back down, and all of that sort of thing. But I prefer just to use one through whatever number because it works just fine. So now that you've seen how to properly connect the MFC to your thrusters, then we're gonna do the same exact thing, but for our maneuver thrusters. And thankfully, the process is the exact same. So as you can see, I've got this one named T3, this one's T4, T5, and T6. And that number goes all the way up to T14, and it doesn't matter which order you put them in, because the FCU is just gonna calculate which thruster needs to fire when. So all you have to do is just get the number of thrusters you have, and then, you know, just put T1 through T whatever. That's how I do it. You don't have to, but it works really well. All right, so now that you have everything connected, the way that this should work is when I change this throttle value to, let's say, 50 in game, that's going to go to the FCU. It's going to change the FCU throttle to 50. And then the MFC is going to look through all of the thrusters that you have and it's going to calculate based on the placement of those thrusters which ones will fire and how powerful they will fire. So we're going to hop into a test flight. And I'm going to show you that with all of that setup that it works. So we're just going to hop into the pilot seat, configure my controls real quick because they like to change a lot. Now if we just throttle forward and I'm going to hop out, you can see 
both thrusters were firing and it just slowed itself down. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM SM326 